but being in real time, real life situations is the best way to do it. Um, you know, when you're going, you know, when you're with your boss and your boss asks you to do something you don't care to do when they ask you to do that task, cause they probably will, uh, <laughs> you know, or, or, or when, or when maybe not the boss, maybe you got a great boss, but maybe when you have, you know, the, the substitute or you got the, the boss from, you know, your boss is sick and somebody else comes in or maybe you don't have a boss. Maybe it's one of your employees. Maybe one of your employees, um, is on a power trip and they know you need them. You know, I've had that before. They know that you need them. Yeah. And so you're wow. like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, like, but you know what? You know what? Why, why are they upset? Why are they feeling this way? Why are they trying to take advantage of me? Because there's obviously a problem. So let, let's figure that out. Like, what's going on, man? Come on, let's shut this door until we figure it out. Like, what's really going on? So actually throwing yourself into those situations or, or when you find yourself in that situation, you know what? Let's just nestle on in. And let's, let's, let's get humble. So, know? so what you're saying is approach con, you're actually talking about addressing conflict directly. That's what you're mm-hmm. saying. And, and I think a lot of times avoidance is far easier. Um, again, that could all, I don't know if that's pride or if, I'm not sure what that is. Is, is, is that part of pride to avoid conflict? Uh, I think it's a mixture, uh, like, uh, Nola was saying, you know, the fear of the unknown, like, you know, just, <sighs> Hey, I, I don't know, you know, like, Hey, I don't know who you are. I don't, it's going to cause a problem. I don't know what you're about, but you know, when you take that time or whatever to, to, all right, you know what? And I think most of us have figured out a lot of the problems we're so scared of and running from, you know, this for me, you know, we're so scared of and nervous about, they're not even remotely They're You know, they're better than you could have ever imagined, you know, or, or they're, or they're, or they're not scary at all. You got so to was... tell that story. And now you, you can't, uh, uh, BA, did you want to say something before, uh, before uh, Mustang tells that's his story? It sounded like you wanted to well, say something. Uh, well, just the uh, biggest thing is, uh, how do you become humble? And, you know, he is right because, uh, your mind does focus, uh, focus on something as you train. And, you know, how do you get back in the fight? You know, you kind of, you know, you lost, you've been humbled. So you got to do something right to get there. But the biggest way, and uh, I'm sure the other guys will say this too, is humility for a believer only comes one way. And that's breaking down, getting on your knees, getting on your face. However, before God and realizing that we're nothing, but he is everything to us and that whatever we want to do, we think we can do or we will do, it has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with what God wants to do in and through us. It's a good Go point. ahead, Chris. Sorry about that. A good point. I mean, let me, let me say ahead. this. Go ahead, Nola. Um, I was... When I was coming up in New Orleans, um, and it is funny because God has equipped me with a lot of information exactly for this show right here. I was, I remember being in, in a fight and my pride was that, uh, I am not going to let this guy beat me. My humble and my humility was, once I fought him, I helped him up. But I also had to shut, shut my pride down and my ego down for all of the people and the spectators that was around there saying, dude, what you doing? What are you doing? Well, that does not change my friendship with this young man that I had a fight with. So listen, I'm the better guy today because I had a, just a little bit more fight in me. So let me help you up. Nobody laugh. We're going to finish playing ball. And that was the humility side in me to mm. pick him back up and say, you know what? Nobody else laughed because he's still a good guy. But now we're going to finish playing ball. We had our dispute. We settled it. Now we're going to finish playing ball. Again, you didn't lose. Again, conflict resolution seems to be at the core of dealing with pride and ego. That's a very good point. And there are three things that I want to elucidate. So the first thing is we de- we defined that pride and ego stem, uh, a lot of actions stem from pride and ego. Most of our pride and ego 
creates situations which we would not normally have to deal with if we would not be fearful of simply protecting our pride and our ego. When we choose to let go of pride, we can be more effective in helping those people who are around us. So being able to actually ask to serve and believe that we are in the position to serve allows us to begin to focus not on our own success, but on the outcomes of improving someone else's life. And therefore, we become more effective. And then the last thing is judgment and dealing with conflict. A lot of times, it's far easier to simply judge someone without dealing with them as opposed to going through the process, even humbling yourself to confront someone and say, hey, you know what? Here's the deal. We may not be able to get along, but you know what? I I, got to tell you this. And being willing to sit down and hear the response, brave the unknown, and then come out on the other end, maybe in a stronger and better relationship, possibly. It may be that some folks you can't get to common ground. But in the vast majority of cases, I think with people making an effort, there is a far greater likelihood that pride and ego won't get in the way of being effective. And I think as men, frustration comes when we are not effective. And that, to me, I think is the central core of this. Do any of you guys have some thoughts that you'd like to share as we wrap up the show today? I feel like uh, ego in some small way, whether it's about our business, whether it's about our company, uh, whatever the case is, and we all kind of have some situations. But I think the best thing is to really embrace our humanity, not by saying, oh, I'm okay with this, I'm going to continue doing it, but saying, listen, I have a problem with this. I have a problem with pornography. So I'm going to get hit with pornography all the time. But each time, I am blessed with an opportunity to win. Every single time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, My pastor, he's awesome. He's amazingly open. And he was like, listen, I had a problem for years with weed. He was like, I had one of the worst times in my life. And he was like, I went to New York. Some of the worst news news I've ever in my life. I went to New York. And just so happened, what do you think? A guy there was offering weed. You know, and he just opened up his trench coat and showing me some weed. And I'm sitting here like, wow, me? That would not do me a lick of good. That guy, I mean, it would it would be completely irrelevant if he showed me that. Like, that wouldn't bother me at all, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. But pornography is not his thing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. you know, we, before, that's how the old guy dealt with it. So, anyway, all that to say, I feel like uh, uh, we should be ready to take those opportunities and every time use them and master them, each time getting a little bit better, changing by degrees, degrees, degrees until we've mastered it. Join us next week when we discuss more issues of importance on Conversations from the Cave. Conversations from the Cave is brought to you by the Alabama Cornea Care Center, Northern Alabama's first irregular cornea, keratoconus, and scleral lens referral center, specializing in the management of degenerative cornea disease and complications resulting from refractive surgery. For more information, you may visit them on the web at alabamacorneacare.com. The Alabama Cornea Care Center, helping patients see the light of the world. Conversations from the Cave is a production of the Provox Media Group. For more information or to share your questions or comments, visit our podcast Facebook page by searching Conversations from the Cave. The views expressed on this program are the personal beliefs of the panelists and do not necessarily represent the beliefs of the Provox Media Group or its sponsors. Join us next time for more real talk from real men. Conversations from the Cave.